Uh, why not? You got a new phone. Howdy folks, out on the street today with Steph filming a little comparison. I've got a bunch of different mirrorless cameras in, so I thought let's do an AF comparison now that the Nikon and Canon have updated their firmware. For the longest time, Sony was just miles ahead, but this new update apparently has really improved both of them. So I have the Z7 with the 24-72.8, and it's now rocking firmware 2.2. Then the Canon EOS R with their 24-70 f2.8, and it's running version 1.6 now. And then the Sony a7R Mark IV with their 24-70 G Master, and it's running firmware 1.1. So as of middle of January 2020, this is the latest firmware for each one. I know there's so many different camera bodies that we could be comparing here. I've basically gone for the high res in each of the systems. The A9 Mark II has even better autofocus, so I could have stacked the deck further that way. But let's compare these three and see how they do. In this episode, we're going to do a series of tests indoors and outdoors with the Canon EOS R, the Nikon Z7, and the Sony a7R IV, doing a bunch of different trials to see which one has the best and most accurate eye autofocus. Before we jump into it, folks, this video is brought to you by us. We put out a couple of great videos every week, free here on YouTube, so please make sure you're subscribed and have turned on notifications. Do up, you know, up or down, like. what do you call Like or dislike Don't to dislike let us- like it, like No, no, no. It. <laughs> our goal for this year is to improve our content. So if you like the video, please like it. If you didn't like it, let us know so we can refine the content over time. And if you want to get more in-depth tutorials, Steph and I have filmed three complete downloadable series now, off-camera flash guide, the uh, wedding photography 101, where we staged our entire wedding, and implied nude portraiture. You can find links to all of those below. Now let's get into the review. So on this first little shoot, I can tell you the Nikon, it's certainly better but I do still find it a little inconsistent. Sometimes without really moving, it's just seeing face. Sometimes it's going all the way into eye. And sometimes it's just like picking up on a button on her jacket and thinking that's it. And I have to hit okay to unlock it from that face to find the actual face. So the Canon is working really nicely, locks on. Let's just throw the focus in the distance. Yeah, it picks her up nice and quickly. This new firmware has really improved things. And now the Sony. Okay, so. Certainly goes much finer in terms of the eye. So yes, in that kind of a situation, all working just fine. One thing I'm really curious about is from how far away will they detect a face and then an eye effectively? So let's go somewhere and put a bit of distance between Steph and I and see which of the three picks her up first. That little red dot in the distance is a Stephanie. So I'm gonna have her work towards me and I'll tell you when each of these cameras pick up her face and or eye and we'll see between the different ones which gets her earliest. No face yet, no face yet. We are in dappled light. Okay, stop. Next, the Canon. So we've seen what the Sony can do. Let's see when this picks her up. Again at 70 mil. Come at me, bro. Nothing yet. Oh, stop. Back, back, back. Little back. Okay, so that is Canon. It's a couple of feet closer. So you could say it didn't do as well but it instantly got the eye, whereas the Sony went straight to face and didn't actually get the eye yet, so maybe even better. Next up, the Nikon. Okay, stop. Okay, so there is face. So pop something down there and just come a little closer. I wanna see how, how far until it gets eye. Okay, there. Wow, so the Nikon was the worst in terms of picking up the face but then it took until like eight feet away to actually get the eye. I wanna just redo the Sony to see, that was when it got your face, to see when it gets the eye, because I think Canon may be in the front. Again with the Sony, let's see how it does. Yep, got the face the same spot. And eye is 
There, okay. Okay, so. Eye is about the same. Yeah, so the eye is about the same as the Nikon. The Canon shattered it by far, like double the distance, got the eye. So now let's try it by obscuring it a little bit. Next up, we did a test to see how the cameras held with moving twigs in front of Steph. Now for this, I put the twigs about halfway between us so that they weren't completely blurred out anyway by the aperture, and we shot them wide open at f2.8. Now the Sony did a really good job of staying with her. It did jump off once or twice, but it quickly found her again, whereas the Canon took a lot longer to re-find her once it had fallen off. And the Nikon, did maybe the best job of all of them and really stayed nicely with her throughout this series. Pitch perfect. Alrighty, so let's do a little outdoor 85 mil action. Now, they're not all the same, I know that. The Nikko is a 1.8. The Sony is a 1.4 and the Canon, oh my God, is a grapefruit, is a 1.2. So I will shoot them all wide open, but to do the actual comparison, I'll shoot them all at 1.8 so it's somewhat comparable. And we're gonna see how it focuses through this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I was being quite tough on it. I was really checking where the focus was. The Canon actually did most poorly. It got 60% in focus, the Sony was 69, and the Nikon was 71. So in reverse order of how quickly it can pick up an eye is how they performed in terms of keeping with it in this kind of a test. One thing though, only this one has animal eye. So let's see what kind of a hit rate I do before we go in. I'll put this on animal eye. The others I'll just try and lock it on the animal's eye and let's see what kind of a rate we get. That's an excuse for you to play with puppies. Let's go. Now this turning head test may seem simple, but it's actually fairly difficult because you're going from full eye to side eye to detecting that it's the edge of an eye on the side of a head. And the distance is actually moving a couple of inches within a couple of seconds. So it's really not as simple as you might think. In this one, it was actually in the same order. Canon, 60%, Sony, 74%, and Nikon, 83%. So Nikon actually ahead there again. Oh, come on, you got XQDs and that you got a buffer like that. Shh. 64 whatever megapixel, no buffering issue, faster. 40 whatever megapixel, I'm so lost track. And yeah, obvious buffering there, surprising. They're both using top spec cards. Here with the hair blowing around though, Surprisingly, the Sony jumped ahead by a long margin. And again, I was being quite tough on this. If the eyes were completely obscured, then I didn't count it in the tally. But if one of the eyes was at least like 80% visible, I did. So the Nikon only got 47%, the Canon 49, and the Sony way ahead at 77. So if you're going to work on a turning head or with smoke, you want the Nikon. If you're gonna deal with wind and hair, the Sony's the way to go. Ah. All right, so takeaway, and I know people hate this kind of a conclusion. I will give a definitive. However, <laughs> the long short of it is, they're all doing really well. And I don't think that any of them are that far ahead that unless you are starting from scratch and deciding which system to go to, if you're a Canon shooter, I would say most likely go for Canon. If you're an Nikon shooter, go for Nikon. If you're a Sony shooter, stay with Sony. They're all doing really well. I would say overall, broadly speaking, 
the Sony still has a slight edge, but the Canon picks things up further away and both the Nikon and the Sony can't be nearly as precise when someone's wearing glasses. I've done a couple of trials now, they see the whole face or they go around the glass, but not the small eye icon. Whereas the Canon was able to get the same result with or without glasses, it still is able to go for the eye behind the glasses, which is a pretty cool result. So they're all doing really quite well. It really comes down to, I would say, if you're looking for buying advice, the most developed ecosystem, Canon and Nikon, if the, develop, if the development of their adapter continues and you're able to make use of EF and F mount glass, then that really changes the whole prospect. But right now, it's just that Canon and Nikon have such different approaches. Nikon released the Z6 and 7, both quite high-end bodies, but then have gone for F4 zooms and 1.8 primes, whereas Canon have released two kind of a mid-range and a low-end body, but then are releasing these epic lenses, the 1.2 primes and the F2 zooms, it's a really different approach. I think they're both trying to signal in their own way that they are taking this whole thing seriously. Are you good there? Yeah, I'm just looking at the photos. Yeah, that's a great one. What, what is that? That's I the didn't wall? Say that. No, no, of course not. Hope you found that useful, folks. If you want to find out the full specs and pricing on the Canon EOS R, the Nikon Z7, and the Sony A7R Mark IV, check out the links in the description below. Please do like, sub, let us know what you think of the video, and we'll see you soon.